Hi there, my name is Mark Barabas, your data protection pal, and hi again after a long time because I've been away from my honeymoon in Europe and I had a special time in a few countries, uh, Germany, Switzerland, and England. So let's have some updates on what's happening in the world of data protection and cybersecurity. So one of the big news that happened just a few days ago is WhatsApp. Are you using WhatsApp in your phones? 500 million user records are out for sale. <sighs> Once again, ladies and gentlemen, data has been lost by big companies out there and we as users become the victims. So we really, really have to be careful. And I am just wondering how the regulators are going to handle this because WhatsApp is used by several countries uh, several people in different countries and well um let's see but well what's more important is please be careful because your number may be used for some spam calls or scam calls yeah uh, let's see what else is next and in singapore the country i'm in gosh a hospital fine fifty eight thousand singapore dollars which is about uh 40 plus us dollars because there was a data breach involving uh, more than 2,000 people's medical data and yeah, gosh, possibly my data is in there too because I actually had my medical reviews and little small operation done in this hospital. Now, uh, well, this is again a big warning to all those uh, folks who are in healthcare because healthcare happens to be one of the targets for this uh, threat actors because they really want to steal somehow, to want to steal medical data, probably to sell to those insurance companies or I don't know. But kind of think of this, if these insurance companies stop buying data, will this prevent these hackers from stealing data? Think about it. You know, there was this campaign that was out there, if the buying stops, the hunting stopped as well that was a, a a message for uh killing animals and all that so i wonder whether we can help this but you know again once in a while uh be careful of your data and well again in this organization makes nothing much we can do about but we just gotta be vigilant and aware of scams and calls that come to us now this article comes in a very good light because um, with those hacks that happen, how do we then communicate privacy and data protection to families and students? So really, I think uh, the education for, for cyber security and cyber hygiene even has to start from the home where parents toss the kid an iPad expecting the kid to know how to stay safe online. Now, that doesn't come with birth. I think, I believe that uh, learning cyber security is acquired rather than natural. I mean, we do have some natural human instincts, but I don't think cybersecurity is one of them. So parents, teachers, please educate children on cybersecurity. And I have a little solution for you. I created a game called Data Heist that educates uh, even young kids on cybersecurity and cyber hygiene. So check it out later. Now, um, one of the major risks that happens because of breaches, and we go back to WhatsApp and even the hospital, Farrah Park Hospital in Singapore. And one of the common reasons why uh, data breaches happen is because of third party risk. And sometimes third parties do come into the office to, or, or, or the workplace to do some sort of work, like example, repair the server, service the hardware, uh, service software even. And of course, there, there are third parties that work remotely through VPN, through common shared networks, through things like TeamViewer and uh, these uh, online software. So it's like kind of like important for us to make sure that we take care of our third party risk. Because third party, apparently I think it's almost like, um, what? A good, I don't know whether I'm going to call it, but a good 50% odd of these risks are really third party risks. So how are you handling your third party risk? Um, well, my recommendation is you can't really go and audit, physically audit all your vendors, but the least you could do is, well, send them a, a checklist and have them do a declaration on their practices and make sure they've got a DPO in, uh, in the house, they've got somebody that uh, 
checks on themselves. At least do a second party audit within internally. And why not? And not just the third party, but insiders. Yes, um, people are a very big missing piece in the uh, threats of an organization. And sometimes it is deliberate because you have uh, threats that are inside the company where, um, well, people are paid to deliberately steal information and pass on to a competitor. Or, you know, um, it could just be carelessness or accidental breaches. I mean, so many cases I can quote where employees make a, uh, well, innocent mistake and it results in a data breach and the regulators hit them hard. Uh, there was a case in Singapore where a uh, non-profit organization was, was fined $30,000 because the employee didn't lock the Excel file and that cost them dear. Well, so what's important is we have to really build our own team to build a trusted workforce to ensure that everyone kind of check on each other to you know do internal checks because in Singapore we say uh, cannot own self check own self you know so that's where we gotta have a teamwork to help each other to look out for 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 mistakes or uh, gaps in our in our work so remember third party risk and then of course the people in the organization and like I said the worst 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 is when you have an employee that is malicious and is employed by your enemy to go and steal data and that does happen like what happened to Melindo Air and last but not least kids kids on Facebook and Instagram how are these big companies meta protecting their privacy well, this article was uh, released by Meta on the 21st of November and talks about um, them giving kids more privacy on Facebook and Instagram and gives them settings. The question is, no one ever taught these students or kids how to set the privacy settings uh, for the matter. Do kids even know about privacy? So my question is, what are the educators doing to educate on all these? Maybe you should introduce how to use social media in school and how to be safe on social media. Think about that. So my name is Mark Barnabas, your Data Protection Pal, and I created this game called Data Heist, and hope that you can check it out, because it's a game that seeks to educate players on cyber security, cyber hygiene, and data protection, and it's playable by kids from the age of eight all the way to adults. And I've done it several times in the corporate. Please feel free to contact me. See you soon, be good, and be safe.